Hey guys, this is Jim with Two Drink Minimum, and I'm doing something a little different. First of all, I'm actually making a video. I'm not just shouldering a gaming mistress with all the work here. But this is actually a review, a, a game review. And I'm uh, going to be talking about this game from Interceptor Entertainment and 3D Realms, you know, the Duke Nukem guys, called Bombshell. It's an isometric action shooter where you shoot the shit out of a lot of aliens, is the, the quick version of it. So he plays his character, Shelly Harrison, a.k.a. Bombshell. Uh, who was a military woman and ended up losing an arm and her entire squad when the main villain planted a bomb, uh, I think around Washington, sometime years before the game takes place. So losing all of them, she's kind of, you know, trying to regain her, regain her uh, reputation and kind of get back into the fight. So she ends up getting this cybernetic arm that can transform into guns and it has an AI uh, and all of that. And so she gets hired to help defend the White House when aliens suddenly start attacking. And during the attack, the president gets captured, and they send Bombshell in to go through this mysterious portal where the president was stolen, and she ends up on a completely different alien planet, and that's where the game starts off. You're fighting aliens, you're going to save the president. You know, it's kind of like bad dudes, only with aliens instead of ninjas. So it was a pretty fun game, uh, it, decent amount of time playing it, uh, even though it, if you point out that there's three, four levels in there, it sounds a little short, but each level has three, four, maybe five different sections in there, and there's a lot of different quests. So you'll have the main quest, um, you know, get to this area, but there's certain objectives you have to complete, either find a key or unlock a puzzle, uh, all that sort of stuff. So it isn't just run through like a hallway simulator and just shoot everything until everything's dead. I mean, there's a lot of that, but there's a little more to it. And you get a bunch of other sub-quests and stuff like that, because there are levels, too, where you can level up your, your shield, your health, uh, your energy, which is used for uh, special abilities, uh, things like that. So what I figured I would do is just kind of go through what I liked and disliked about the game, because I think that just works better instead of just assigning a score and letting the internet figure out what they interpret that as, but I like to get the bad out of the way first, you know, what, what do they say in job interviews, get to do the bad first and then end on a high note, that sort of thing. So, the first thing was I noticed a lot of different times there's, uh, there are random difficulty spikes. So for example, in the first level I'll be running around, just kind of shooting aliens, getting the hang of things, doing okay, taking a little bit of damage, but, you know, doing okay. And then you'll complete an objective usually, that's when I ran into it, and you'll just get swarmed by a pack of like 10 or 15 enemies who will just punch you in the face all at the same time and poof, you're dead in one shot. Uh, well, you know, 10, 15 little shots all put together, but you get what I mean. Uh, and that kept happening. I figured it'd be like a one-time deal, but then it happened more than once or twice, so it was definitely noticeable. Uh, I mean, I think that could just be a, a balanced thing. I don't know if that was intentional or whatever. And it, it's tougher early on because you don't have a whole lot of guns. You get your main gun, and, and there are you know you get different guns in the game. Like you get a machine gun, uh, you get a shotgun. The shotgun's really fun, uh, and things like that. But early on, all you really have is your initial gun and maybe the machine gun, which isn't all that great until you upgrade them. So it, those difficulty spikes kind of catch you unaware, uh, but thankfully they're not debilitating because you could just respawn from your last checkpoint and all it costs you is like 5% of your money. Not too bad. Um, but that difficulty spike really punches you in the face to keep with that going um, on the first boss. So I'd run into the first boss and I'm thinking, alright, cool, you know, let's beat him up. And then I realize that when he's dying a lot faster than I expected for a boss, I'm thinking, okay, he's going to have some multiple phases, and I was right. Not to spoil things, I apologize if you want to go in completely blind, but yeah, he's got, every boss has multiple phases, uh, but he's got a couple attacks where they just completely catch you off guard, and it's it, very unexpected, so it's kind of like you're, you're doing okay, even footing, it's a lot of, you know, you're, you're dodging, really practicing your skills, showing off your skills, and then, bam, surprise this huge thing just came out of nowhere and you had no idea what the hell happened. Um, but speaking of the first boss, it leads into the other main issue, which really, for me, kind of knocked the score down. And I know I, 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 I know I said I wouldn't really hold it against the game too much, but the bugs. And I'm not talking about alien bugs, even though there's, there's a bunch of them. I mean, the game bugs. Things like clipping into walls. 
enemies clipping into walls. Sometimes when the enemies would clip into walls, they'd either become invincible or maybe they'd just become sitting ducks. Uh, health bars disappearing. One time I, I hit to respawn after I got killed and just never showed up again. I just was gone. It's just a blank screen. I had to end up restarting the game. Uh, now, and I, I say all this with, uh, you know, kind of an asterisk at the, at the top here because I started playing the game before a bunch of patches came out because the, the, the Bombshell team is working on it up until the release window and there's going to be a day one patch to fix a bunch of bugs so, you know, it's I'm not going to hold it too against them. There's, there's probably a lot that I ran into that has either been fixed but I didn't see it because I had already beaten a level at the time or they're going to fix in the day one patch so I'm not holding a whole lot against that. Uh, but it was definitely noticeable, especially in that first boss, because he was hitting me when I was nowhere near his his big mandibles or whatever the hell you want to call them. And there are other times when he didn't hit me and I was standing right in the middle of him when he should have killed me in one hit. It, really weird little quirks and stuff like that. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it when the game is bugging you into a wall and you're just kind of floating. Uh, so those are really the bad, and it's it's not a whole lot to to really ruin the game experience, but it's it's kind of frustrating when you have to restart the game because you just you died and never came back. Things like that. Okay, so now we get the bad out of the way. Get that out of there. Now let's talk about the good. Because there is a lot of good going on here. Uh, the first thing that I'll notice, or I noticed, that you'll notice, you'll probably see in the video in the, that's playing right now, is the visual design. The actual look of everything. It looks really, really cool. Like you get the you get this giant dying sun underneath all these cracked and floating platforms and stuff like that, and the graphics are really cool looking. Like a lot of detail, even on like little mundane things like the the floor pattern, or the rocks, or, or you know again the dying sun in the background that's all swirling and everything, and the light shining off of it. And the next level is uh, a Zareth. Uh, it's a completely different planet. You. It, you're running around this giant ice cavern with all these different you know, icicles and stalactites and everything which starts off as kind of a, a dark ice cave and then changes into this hexagonal crystal bridge thing that you know you're looking down as you're running over the bridge and it's just caves upon caves and just all this stuff there's a lot going on in the game and it's really really cool looking uh, and not just the actual visual design of it all, but the actual technical design of it all. If you look at the maps, it's it's some old school map design in a good way. You know things like Deus Ex, um, where there's multiple ways to get to where you're going. Like you know you get to go from point A to point B, but you don't have to go just in a straight line. Like as much as I like the game, this isn't Final Fantasy 13 where you just run straight until you get to the next cutscene. This is, well, you can go up there, you can go down there, whatever you want to do. That's where you got to go, however you want to go there, go for it. The game encourages exploration and actually rewards you for it, where if you run into a random hallway, there's going to be a subquest or money or ammo or something. Maybe you'll just get an ambush and get punched in the face like I was talking about before. But something will be there, you know. Uh, so it's, it's nice to kind of have that level design back in instead of just go point A, point B, get a cutscene, shoot some stuff, rinse, repeat until the boss, and then, you know, you're done. Uh, and finally, the music. The music was really cool. I mean, that it was also uh, kind of old-school rock, very reminiscent of uh, the Zerg music from StarCraft 1. If, if you kind of, like, mixed it with a little bit of the Terran music uh, on StarCraft, and then they kind of dated Duke Nukem for a little bit and kind of made a song or two, Stuff like that, so it really fit the the game well. When you had the fight scenes and uh, you know they you're running around the the ice caves and stuff, um, it, it was kind of not really spooky, but sort of mysterious. And then an actual boss fight kicks in, and it really pumps you up, and you want to just shoot the shit out of it. Uh, so the music was really good until the end credit song, which uh, I'm not gonna explain it because I won't spoil anything, but it it d didn't seem to really fit. Not to say a bad and all the good side, but it, it was a little weird. You'll you'll see when you get to it. Uh, there's actually a version of the game that comes with the soundtrack, so if you're going to pick this up, I recommend that because it's pretty damn cool. Not really something that you're going to be just blasting at the office, whatever, when people are listening to soft rock, but, you know, if you want to put headphones on and really psych yourself up for getting that report out to your boss last second, that'll be the soundtrack for it. Okay, so all that said, uh, what's the verdict? Because that's what a lot of people are coming here to, to see. And I had to 
think about a rating scale because I don't think we actually have a rating scale right now so what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna give it one out of two drinks now that isn't that isn't a, a numerical value so that isn't a, a, a 50 percent and it's just, you know 50 percent is like a death sentence for games what that means is that the game is worth checking out you know it doesn't do anything crazy different to elevate it to God status but it doesn't do anything that really holds you back from enjoying it I enjoyed it uh, it had a little bit of a slow intro I think but that's just because you know you only have like one gun and then you you're slowly unlocking things uh, getting new abilities uh, and all that but eventually you, you're really running around and you, you just become this awesome killing machine and it, it's pretty fun the, the second boss fight especially is <laughs> super fun um, but I'm putting an asterisk on that rating the one out of two drinks because if the bugs get fixed which they're supposed to like I said earlier they're, they're working on fixing the bugs it's gonna be a day one patch and all that stuff if they fix all those bugs it's like a drink and a half out of two which means yeah definitely check it out play it fill up your whatever you want in your glass and, and play through the whole thing it, it'll definitely be worth your time so it's it's not going to be again godlike status but if they fix those bugs definitely check this out so again one out of two drinks if they fix those bugs one and a half out of two weird rating scale I'll come up with a video or something that explains all of it but I like the whole not numerical value and just an explanation for it all uh, version of a rating scale better so anyway that's bombshell uh, you get a little bit of good and bad in there be sure to check out all of our other videos not ones where I'm rambling like this maybe I'll get some more videos to review uh, things like that so like subscribe all that other typical YouTube video ending sort of things and uh, you know thanks for watching bye guys